Hi everyone, this is Ross and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast style video that I put out for you guys every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock. And uh, we talk a lot about fruits and vegetables, uh, important announcements, things that have been going on um, you know, in my life or things that I've learned that are related to fruit. And that's actually what we're going to be uh, talking about today is something I had just learned um, and I thought was pretty interesting that I wanted to share it with you guys rather than having my girlfriend uh, listen to me on the phone, jabber on for 20 minutes and talking to you guys. But basically, uh, I wanted to figure out some new crops to grow, um, annual crops, whether they're fruits or vegetables, grow them in my uh, garden beds this year. Kind of want to try some new things, you know, that's pretty important as a grower and it kind of makes it fun and fresh is always trying something new um, you know and there's definitely been over the course of the amount of years that I've been gardening now um, you know I've been taking taking gardening more and more seriously as the years have gone on uh, I've certainly learned that there's certain things that take a lot more effort a lot more work a lot more care and there's some other things you can just plant them and let them do their thing and that's it um, so specifically, I was trying to find things that were not only new and interesting and tasty, but things I could plant and leave them alone and not worry about them. You know, I think that's the name of the game with my garden, with a lot of my fruit trees. As I ha add more things, as I grow more things, uh, you know, as I expand the amount of work that it is necessary to maintain my property, um, adding things that I can just plant and let them do their thing that's like the best that is it is the best um so i recently watched a video inadvertently finding this out that uh baker creek had done a video and they put out a video on the copen climate classification that's what i'm looking at right now on wikipedia i'll put a link to this in the uh, description basically in baker creek they had the same kind of issues that i just mentioned they have a huge seed catalog and they offer all these different seeds and they get people uh, all the time asking them what should I grow in my climate what does well so they put out this kind of like a video series to try to help people out and this is one of the things that um, one of the people that works there talked about and it's called like I said the Copen climate classification and essentially what this does is you click on this picture here it brings it up and you figure out where you are on the map obviously you should hopefully you know where that is and we're right over here um, we're really pretty much on the edge of this green color here and this teal now I would consider myself more akin more similar to a southern climate in the United States I, I personally have uh, expressed thoughts in the past that my climate is pretty much I mean, not exact. So there's obvious, obviously there's differences, but it's similar in the mid-Atlantic. So, you know, from about where I am at is the, the furthest north as you go. Uh, even parts of like New York, so like Staten Island, I think even New York City, um, all the way down from there until you hit like parts of Florida. And that's pretty much what I consider the mid-Atlantic. And that's my climate. However, in the Köppen classification system, they call it a humid subtropical climate. So once you figure out where you are on the map and you see what color you are, find out that color on the bottom here. And my color is CWC subtropical, I'm sorry, it's CFA humid subtropical climate. And then it brings you to a new Wikipedia page. It tells you all about the climate uh, that you live in. You can really confirm, you know, not just by what the map says. Confirm. Read through all of this and say, okay, does that sound like my climate? Um, certainly it does. And I've read through this. It's essentially a warm climate in the summer, a cold climate, or a cold, mild climate in the, in the wintertime, uh, followed up by lots of rain in the summer. That's, that's pretty much how I describe this uh, climate. And you can obviously get into more detail. It says right here where it is located in the United States, you know, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, Washington, D.C., New Jersey, you know, all these southern states, even out sort of uh, in the middle, in the middle of the country towards like Texas and Oklahoma. Um, you know, you start, you can even kind of compare 
my climate to those climates. So once you've figured out where you're at, okay, here's the next step. You click on this map, so there's another map, and this map highlights all the areas uh, throughout the world that have a similar climate to yours. And in this case, I'm looking for this yellowish green color here. And you'll see that you can zoom in and you'll see that, you know, parts of Italy, parts of uh, the Czech Republic, parts of Croatia, certain parts of, you know, like, uh, you know, parts of Europe, colder portions of Europe, more humid portions of Europe. Um, and then you go over here towards Asia and you'll see that Japan is filled with this color. Same thing with China. And I had no idea. Now, I went to Japan. I was there for 10 days this past June, and I certainly thought that Japan, at the time that I went, it was during the rainy season there, I thought it was very similar climate to Florida. Um, I've been to Florida many, many times. I go there a lot, and I can certainly agree that Japan is very similar to, to Florida, and if Florida, by the Köppen classification system, is similar to where I live, maybe not so much in the range of temperature or the amount of heat that Florida can, can generate, but uh, certainly with the humidity and certainly with the overall feel of Japan, I had this overwhelming sense that it was very much so like Florida. Uh, you know, I was very surprised to learn though that China could be considered a similar climate to the southern half of the United States, or the southern, the southeastern part of the United States. And recently I had a friend ask me um, what figs would do well in California. And I was like, well, why do you want to know what figs do well in California? Because you live in, I think he lives in China. He lives in a very rainy part of China. Like it's a lot of heat. And in my mind, I was like, well, actually you should be looking towards the southeastern part of the United States. Uh, we get lots of heat down there, lots of rain down there, lots of humidity. It sounds exactly like your climate. So you need to figure out what the growers in the southern, the southeastern corner of the United States are doing um, and replicate that where you are in China. So that's what I told him. And I and actually now looking at this chart, it's clicking in my mind like, oh, yeah, that does make sense. <laughs> so, um, you know, th this is where we're kind of, this is where we're leading into here. So we figured out that we're in this particular region of climate. We're in the humid subtropical, we're in a humid subtropical climate. There's other parts of the world that are in those regions. Now, what in those regions does well? What can I plant in China or Japan or the Czech Republic or parts of Italy and say, all right, I'm planting this out. You're on your own. We're done, right? You could let's see how well you grow right you can find that out you can easily just do a google search and say okay you know uh what grows well in japan or what vegetables what japanese vegetables should i grow or what chinese vegetables should i grow or what are some really good crop japanese crops you know what i mean like that kind of thing and you'll get a whole list of different things that pop up and i was amazed actually i was very surprised and now, looking back at my season, because what I had done was I bought, I bought some seeds from Fedco of Asian-style greens of different types, whether they're more like a, uh, a mustard or more like a cabbage or more like a, you know, a bok choy or more like a, a broccoli. I had tried all these different things, and a lot of them I found to be really easy to grow. One was Mizuna. I mean, I planted that thing. It just did phenomenal. It tasted great. I don't have to do anything to it. Here's Mizuna. It's a type of mustard that they grow quite heavily in Japan. Um, I also grew, I think it's this stuff here, Yokata Na, which actually tastes a lot like broccoli. And they're like these smaller, um, kind of like bok choys, but they taste a lot like broccoli. And those grew really well. I mean, there was a lot of things in here. So now it's like clicking in my head even further. It's like, okay, well, if all these things did well in my garden, I already have proof of that. 
I live in a similar climate that they do. What else can I grow that I can just plant, not really worry about, and may just be a better alternative to certain things that I already am growing, right? Like I said, we're trying to make things more interesting. We're trying to learn something, and we're trying to make just less work for ourselves. So here's some interesting things that I came across, and this is kind of what I wanted to get at is uh, this is really the whole point of the video, all that leading up to this. But um, here's something interesting I found called a kabocha squash. And I never heard of this, but apparently it's got rich yellow-orange flesh, excellent quality, finely textured, nutty taste. Uh, and according to Baker Creek and other sources, it's kind of similar to like a pumpkin. Um, even though pumpkins, we think of pumpkins in the United States, they're orange on the outside, and they're orange on the inside, and they've got very different characteristics than this squash. But, you know, pumpkin is a type of squash, so why can't this one do well here and work for me? So, I'm thinking about growing this particular squash. You know, it's pretty good for uh, curries, breads, and baking, uh, a very popular type in a lot of Asia. And it says that it's, um, you know, high quality eating squash, which is exactly the kind of thing I'm looking for. Um, then I came across this thing in my search here. It's called Gailan. And I believe through Fedco, I may have ordered some of this. You know, it was Kailan. This stuff here didn't do well for me. Um, it may have been too uh, warm in the season at that point. Um, I'm not going to say that all of this is going to do where do well where I live, but it's certainly worth trying, right? So this stuff apparently is a nice alternative to kale or even broccoli. You harvest these flor like broccoli florets. Um, you can see people's reviews. You know, I'm interested in finding seeds of this thing, you know. Um, another thing I came across was the Japanese cucumbers or... Uh, cucumbers from different parts of Asia. And you would think, like, why, who cares about a cucumber? We got great cucumbers here. Well, I think because certain, cu obviously certain vegetables are, are just adapted to different locations better than others. So why am I, like, fighting the elements, fighting nature? Um, of course, I could save seeds every year and have that variety adapt over the years and become a better variety in my climate, but you know, why not start out with something better, something already that is adapted? And this one here is of great interest to me. Uh, you know, it, it, the vines attain twice the length of common varieties. They do well on fences and trellises, saving spence, space in the garden. That's exactly what I want because I'm growing all of my things vertically. We've, we've kind of talked about this, I think, in the last episode of Fruit Talk. But... Um, you know, the, it says right here that the vines are almost mildew-proof and well-adapted to hot, dry summers. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily sound exactly like my climate because it's hot, wet summers. I don't know if that's a typo or what, but um, it also makes excellent pickles and sets the standard for slicing cucumbers. Never bitter. This just sounds like a great all-around cucumber that's well-adapted. To my area. It just seems like a no-brainer to me. So this is potentially a cucumber or a cucumber like this that I'm going to consider growing. There's also something out here called Nanohana that I've heard about through just googling around and I need to find I need to find um, seeds of this or even find out what it is but I believe it's a form of broccoli rob. It's similar to broccoli rob and I I love broccoli rob, except broccoli rob that I grew this year did absolutely nothing for me. Um, certainly well adapted to our heat, whatever it was that I grew. I think it was Happy Rich maybe from Johnny's, but uh, it didn't do well. It didn't ever put out um, put out side shoots for me. You know, that's what broccoli rob's supposed to do. You get these side shoots off the broccoli. You get a whole bunch of side shoots. You cut that up. And then you put that in your in your um, your stir fries as a nice little bitter, sort of bitter um, vegetable to add some extra element there and complexity to your to your dish. 
So I don't know, but I'm sure there's a better version of whatever I grew that's more adapted to where I live. Perhaps something that more readily puts out side shoots on and on and on. And then I was like, well, where can I get all these seeds? Because I need to find a place besides Baker Creek or Fedco that may carry a lot of this stuff. Maybe something that's more interesting. You know, there's a whole lot of interesting crops that I came across. Like, CISO is, uh, CISO is basically one of the big herbs that they use there. They put it in a lot of drinks and garnishes. I think they even put it on sushi in Japan. Um... You know, there's all kinds of different things that I'm not necessarily aware of. So I figured, let's find a nursery in the United States that specializes in a lot of these Asian vegetables. And this is exactly what this is, kitazawaseed.com. So pretty cool that I found this. And here's a melon. You know, I'm all about melons, guys, if you're watching Fruit Talk. Here's actually a Japanese melon. Now, I don't know what melon variety this is. I don't know what it, the name of it is in Japan. It doesn't, it says Ichiba Koji. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily know what it is. And it says that it's a hybrid. So maybe I won't grow a hybrid. I'll stick to heirlooms. But this could be pretty cool, right? It says the bricks is over 16. That's really high for a uh, melon, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I have to look into that. But I think 16 is a really high bricks. Uh, it says it's very easy to grow, widely adaptable, resistant to mildews. You know, it sounds like a really nice melon for me, potentially, in a humid mid-Atlantic climate. So, I'm just going to go through this website, you know, when I have time. Um, I didn't put a whole lot of research into all this stuff that I showed you guys. But, when I, when I do have time, I will put a lot of research into this and kind of alter and add to the list of things that I'm growing this year. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, if you have any suggestions or things that you think I should grow that do well in Japan or do well in China and think I should grow that, that particular vegetable or annual fruit, um, I'd love to hear about it. So put that down in the description. And uh, thank you all for watching. Take care.